Welcome to another Apollo Papyrus podcast episode. I am Aaron Apollo Camp. For this episode, my interview guest has been a movie, television series, and stage actor, as well as a playwright, and he is the author of the memoir, How Not to Make It in Hollywood, which is about his time and experience in the Hollywood motion picture industry. His name is David Hearn, and my interview with David will follow the teleportation sound. David Hearn, welcome to the Apollo Papyrus podcast. Well, thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad to be with you. Happy to be part of it. Feel free to introduce yourself to our listeners. Mm-hmm. Well, my name is Dave Hearn. I've been an actor and a writer my whole life, which is uh, 66 years. Um, I did a decade in Hollywood. I did better than some and worse than others. And I recently uh, published a memoir, How Not to Make It in Hollywood, which is, I'm going for a little irony with the title. I'm trying to be supportive, kind of, be a little bit of a pat on the back for struggling actors. And um, I'm pleased with with how it came out. Um, I also uh, recently uh, completed work on a movie which should be released, I believe, first part of next year, called Thirsty. It's starring Kyra Sedgwick, Thora Birch, um, Jamie Newman, a lot of good actresses in this movie. Um, And uh, I have a nice uh, part in it early in the movie. And um, it's going the film festival circuit right now as we speak. So if they snag a... uh, Distributor, it should be out first part of next year. Now, you've written a memoir about your time in Hollywood titled How Not to Make It in Hollywood. Without spoiling too much of your memoir, what is it about? It's basically what I wanted to do was provide struggling actors with a roadmap. So I I try to save the reader, most of whom I assume are either aspiring actors or people who aspire to showbiz to kind of save them a little money, time and shoe leather. Cause I didn't, uh, you know, I fell for a lot of scams. I wasted a lot of time. You know, I learned kind of the hard way. So the book is sort of, well, first of all, I wrote it to be funny above all else. I'm a comedy writer. So I wanted the book to be funny and entertaining whether you're in showbiz or not. And, um, but I like to think that it's, um, that I can help other struggling actors avoid some of the pitfalls and uh, uh, nonsense that can sometimes get in your way. Why did you decide to write How Not to Make It in Hollywood? And why did you decide to write it with a comedic style? Well, (laughs) you know, it's funny you should ask because, I didn't quite know what I was writing when I started it. I've been a writer my whole life, but this is my first book book. Everything I've written has been a stage play, a screenplay, a skit, a sketch. Um, You know, so I started working on this one and I didn't quite know what I was doing with it. It took me a little while to kind of find the voice. Um, And I realized that, yeah, this one needs to be a book and not um, a play because I wanted it to be truthful. I'm getting a lot of laughs and all of that, but my main goal was to be truthful, kind of, you know, I think I'm talking about a lot of things in this book that I don't think have ever really been written about publicly before. They're sort of commonly understood things, but you're not kind of supposed to say them out loud, and I am. I'm, I'm writing them in the book. Here's some of the crazier stuff that comes with an attempt at an acting career. The writing stuff I, uh, has always run parallel to acting. So I guess it's only logical that sooner or later I would end up writing about acting. And up to this point, it didn't occur to me before. I was just an actor busy doing that. And everything that I wrote was something for the theater or the screen. Um, This time, 
I, I decided to go in a whole different direction. And I'm glad because it came out the way that I wanted it to. I worked on this book very hard. I worked on it every day for almost two years. And, um, but hey, you know, like I said uh, to begin with, above all, at the top of the list, laughs. I would like, if you want to read a book and have some laughs, uh, check out How Not to Make It in Hollywood. By the way, it's available on Amazon Books, uh, Apple Books, and, um, well, those are the two right now. Okay. How long did it take you to write your memoir? And what were the easiest and hardest parts of writing your memoir for you? Uh, altogether, it took about two years um, to get the first draft out. Um, and I'm not sure. Um, you know, when it comes to writing, it's very mysterious. It's like the reverse of acting. When you get an acting job, there's a character there and dialogue and a specific thing that you conform to. With writing, I never kind of know where I'm going, you know, when I come out of the gate, when the horses leave the barn. Uh, uh, sometimes I've, sometimes I've nosedived. I remember one time, a uh, couple of years ago, I wrote three quarters of a screenplay. I wrote almost 70 pages of a script that I just lost faith in somewhere along the line. So I just parachuted out of that one. Um, I also write in the book about my attempts at selling my writing as well. I detail a staged reading of a play that I wrote years ago at a playhouse in Hollywood that um, was fairly disastrous, but it was also good for laughs. So I sort of recount in fairly vivid detail that whole experience. And I had some upsides too. Like I said, you know, I did okay. Um, I got three or four TV gigs, small movie role. Um, and then, um, of course, that town is pretty exclusively about film. I, I tried to continue theater because I've done theater my whole life. But theater in Hollywood is all directed toward people getting into film and television. So, um, you know, I don't really think that way. I just think about doing whatever I'm doing as good as I can do it. Um, but I think, um, yeah, I think that, uh, look, if nothing else, I can save the reader a lot of money. <laughs> I blew a lot of money on stupid stuff that I thought would advance my career. Um, and uh, boy, uh, you know, I'd be a wealthy guy <laughs> if I could get some of that back. So I, I'd like to save you a few bucks. I have one more question about your memoir, and then I'm going to go into a question about your, your script writing work. Is your memoir self-published, traditionally published, or hybrid published? Well, I, I, I got... <laughs> I, I guess in the end, it was self-published. I, I was sort of halfway on the way to hustling it to literary agents and uh, independent publishers. And I got some people to read it. But I also had very specific things in mind about the way I want it packaged. I've got jokes, you know, like on the back cover. And if you sign, you know, for a commercial publisher... They have a lot to say about the way your book is presented. So I reached a point where I wanted to make sure that the product, the physical book itself, was written and published correctly. Because then if other publishers want to pick it up, fine. Um, so I, I, it's, um, I guess it's kind of hybrid slash self-published. Um, and uh, but it, it helped me start my own publishing company. I call myself Bumpy Press now, and I'm working on an independent little short movie, kind of a parody of science fiction. And that's going to be the first Bumpy picture that I produce. My next question is about your uh, work uh, writing scripts. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Do you write, have you written a, a screenplays, uh, uh, plays, uh, theater plays, or both? And what has your work as a scriptwriter been like? Um, I've written both. I've written st stage plays and screenplays. I enjoy them both. They're both, they're very different. Um, you know, when you're writing, a, okay, I wrote a horror script. It's funny because I'm not much into the horror genre, even though I've appeared in some of it. Um, I did it sort of under contract. A, a guy had a location that he wanted to shoot in and a budget for a film, and he needed somebody to write the script. So I gave it my very best shot at, at producing a horror script, and I, I think it's still pretty good. It's called Hell Hospital. I wrote another script called Means of Exchange, which is the life story of a single hundred dollar bill from the minute it's printed at the mint through all the hands that it passes through until it's destroyed. I thought that might be an interesting idea. No one's ever done the life story of one hundred dollar bill. So now the thing with writing is that the hustle in, in many ways is just as daunting and off-putting as a lot of the exclusionary structures you run into in the acting world. So I reached a point where I stopped sort of hustling on the writing end because I've been getting further with the acting. You know, I, I've been getting more work, more exposure as an actor. So if I focus on that one and it continues to evolve, getting my scripts read is a lot easier. In fact, I just went to a screening of the movie that's coming out next year, and I gave a copy of my book to the director. Um, so I, I think that's the way it tends to work. You know, yeah, I mean, they approach established actors all the time, and they'll say things like, hey, you got any scripts? You written anything? They just sort of assume that they have material. So I'll have that taken care of whenever they approach me about that. Got a shelf full of them. Um, I'm also part of an online writers group that I enjoy a lot called Prolific Writers Life. We meet once a week and everybody actually writes during the session. It's a really good disciplinary structure to keep you productive, keep your mind active. Um, so, um, yeah, and I'm at a point right now where I'm kind of in the winter circle, at least at the moment. I mean, in the same year, I got a book coming out and a movie. So I'm not complaining. Um, I feel very lucky. I feel very grateful for every opportunity I've, I've ever had. And in spite of all my, you know, jokes that I make in the book about Hollywood, the times that I did work were wonderful. Oh, they were just a kick. You know, I'm sorry there weren't uh, more of them, but the, the gigs that I did get, I just mm. enjoyed so much. Um, so to stick with the writing, um, you know, screenplay and stage play are totally different mediums. In fact, they're almost unrelated. A screenplay is a series of shots. So every second there's a shot, there's a location, there's a character speaking, and you have to be able to speak screenplay as it were. You have to kind of know that lingo. And um, stage play is, is very different. You can't get away with stuff on stage that you could in a screenplay. So you have to have your characters clear. You have to, yeah, you can't resort to any of the devices that screenwriters use, you know, a dream sequence or a memory or suddenly somebody's waking up and, oh, it was just a dream. You know, you don't have any of those things. You have to fill up the stage with action and activity and plot and character. Um, so it's a very different sort of challenge. You mentioned you're working on an independent independent film project and you've mentioned it a couple of times already tell us more about it without spoiling too much of the final film uh you mean the one i'm making on my own or the one i appeared in that's coming out next year uh the both of those okay well <laughs> thirsty is the name of the movie that i 
acted in and that that's the one looking for a distributor right now and it, it should be out next year that was an independent uh film um it was financed independently it was shot independently but i mean for me speaking as an actor it was very freeing because i've been in both i've been in commercial hollywood type you know movies and independents and i enjoy i felt like i could flex my wings a little more in this independent movie um the director was wonderful she was everybody on the set was so pleasant it made working really nice that's not always the case I, I, there's times i've been on chaotic sets where people aren't getting along and you know um but this one was quite delightful um now the other project that i'm working on <laughs> uh, it's kind it's a science fiction parody kind of um uh I, I'm not that big a fan, per se, of, you know, Star Wars, Star Trek. I mean, you know, I understand their place. I'm just, personally, I'm not that big a fan of that particular genre. But I decided to kind of make my own version and just fill it chock full of jokes. So I wrote the script, and it's going to be a short. I, I think when I'm done with it, it might be about 20, 25 minutes in running length. Um, so it's not a feature, you know, film. But uh, I'm going to be putting it up on YouTube. Oh, if you would like a little entertainment, I have a series of commercials that I did, that I created for my book, How Not to Make It in Hollywood, that are on YouTube. All you got to do is go and look up my name, David Hearn, H-E-R-N on YouTube or how not to make it in Hollywood. And I have six commercials that you can see that I also wrote and produced independently. Um, and they're full of uh, chuckles as well. Um, I just, uh, God made me a comedy guy. So I can't help it. Almost everything I write comes out comedy. Even one of my stage plays, uh, what loving people do is about a very serious subject matter. It's about mental illness and all this stuff, but yet it came out comedic anyway. Um, so I'm still happy with it, but I just can't help myself. <laughs> Every uh, well, look, my father was a stand-up comedian, Bernie Hearn. He was a stand-up Catskills, New York Jewish comedian guy who also appeared in some films. I'm proud to say my father appeared in the classic When Harry Met Sally that Rob Reiner directed with Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan. My father appears in that movie being a funny guy because he was a stand-up comic. And he had a couple other gigs. He had sort of a comeback in the 80s a little bit. So, uh, no, I'm a very blessed guy. So, you know, even in the, in the uh, foreword and epilogue of my book, I try to tip my hat to Hollywood. Sure, you know, Hollywood has, is a pain in the butt. Uh, I, I, I thought for sure during my period there that I would score a series or, you know, uh, some, you know, really juicy work. I did get, I would say, you know, four or five gigs, but um, not enough to get the snowball rolling there. Ironically, as soon as I got out of there and I came up here to Oakland and Northern California, I got signed by an agent almost immediately because then I was this guy from Hollywood who had film credits. So it's ironic that almost as soon as I left Hollywood behind, I got more film, television, and stage work up here in the San Francisco Bay Area than I did the whole decade I was in Hollywood. I've been working as an actor very consistently since I left uh, Tinseltown. So, you know, everyone's career and everyone's path takes a different, uh, you know, little journey. 
So I just thought I would share my goofy uh, Hollywood experiences with the public and hope that they enjoy that experience. I have uh, one last question, and it's about uh -huh. the, uh, the uh, movie uh, industry here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Why does Hollywood maintain as much of a veil of mystery as they possibly can about the inner workings of the film studios and the American motion picture industry as a whole? <laughs> Excuse my laughter. Um, that's kind of exactly what I was up to. You almost just described kind of what I was up to in writing this book. I wanted to kind of, you know, open the curtain, kind of peel back the, the cover and sort of expose and write very in very literal expositive terms about what actually goes on there. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I hope, I hope it's not going to put me on some blacklist somewhere. I didn't mention anybody by name. Um, but, um, well, I think the reason they maintain that is that, you know, that's kind of what most people believe that, you know, Hollywood is this magic, exciting, mir miraculous place where larger than life things happen. Um, well, <laughs> if you're lucky, maybe you could get a little bit of something approaching that. But for the most part, it's an industry. People forget it's also a job, you know. I mean, just like everyone has a job that they get up to and go to and do it, it, acting is a job as well. You need to have your lines down. You need to be on time. You need to know what you're doing. You need to follow the director. You know, it's um, being a good um, journeyman as an actor is important. It can earn you a very good reputation by being responsible and reliable. Um, but I think Hollywood does that because, you know, that's why they call it Tinseltown. So when everybody tunes into the Oscars, you know, they, they'll be magically entertained. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not trying to spoil anybody's fun. In fact, I'm just trying to bring some of my own version of fun to the enterprise. Well, hopefully next time the Oscars are held, nobody gets slapped on stage. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> um, I certainly won't be doing that. David, thank you for appearing on the Apollo Papyrus podcast. You were an insightful guest. Well, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. I had a real good time. Thank you. It was wonderful and insightful to interview David. This is Aaron Apollo Camp reminding y'all to find your writing and reading purpose. Bye for now. Copyright 2024, Aaron Apollo Camp, All Rights Reserved. This podcast episode is intended for the private listening of our audience. Any reuse or retransmission of this episode without the express written consent of the podcast host is prohibited, except under fair use guidelines. Royalty-free music and sound effects obtained from https colon forward slash forward slash www.zapsplat.com.